Hey everybody, this is Upgrade Your Laptop, and we're here to show you today some of the testing procedures and what installation of a video card is like on an Alienware M18X R1. You can see we've got a whole bunch of different cards that we have as options for these systems. We have NVIDIA 660Ms, 670Ms, AMD 6970s, 6990s, and what many of you are excited about, the new HD 7970Ms. So we have an Alienware here today and we're going to take it apart step by step and show you the important things to watch for and how to get these cards working in your new system. So the very first thing you'll want to do before you get started, you'll first want to make sure that you are grounded and working on an electrostatic mat. This way you don't fry any of your components. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, flathead screwdriver is very helpful. We find an X-Acto knife can be handy for peeling off thermal pads and we use premium IC Diamond 7 thermal paste for cooling all our components. After that, you're going to want to make sure that your system is off, unplugged from the AC, and has the battery removed. Once that's done, you'll want to remove the bottom cover bottom cover. We've already pre-removed some of these so it'll be faster for you. It's normally held down by four screws here, 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 and here. Once those screws are removed, the panel slides backwards and lifts free revealing the bottom of the notebook. Next you'll want to remove the top cover of the notebook so you can access the video cards. The top cover is secured to the bottom of the case by five screws. They're marked with an I on the case. You can see them here, 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 and here. Once those screws have been removed and set aside, you can flip over the notebook and remove the top cover. Now that you've removed the screws securing the top cover, along the back, you may need the flathead screwdriver to do this. With the screen as far back as it can go, you'll need to work your way through and pry along the back edges until you are able to remove the cover. There are snaps all the way around. Be careful when you remove it. There is a cable attached for your media buttons right here. That can be removed by the screwdriver. You flip the black latch up and the cable pops. Next up, you need to remove the keyboard and the macro keyboard. These are two separate parts. The keyboard is held down by five screws here, 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 and here. In this case, we've only put one back in place since we're opening this thing up for testing all the time comes out and again like the top case there is a cable connecting it to the main board so gently and slowly flip it over and you will see that you have your keyboard cable that sends your keystrokes and that's your backlight cable these have connectors that lift up with a gentle pry of a flat bladed screwdriver and then the cables come out. One. Just set that aside. There's one screw holding down the macro keys. That lifts up, and as well, there are two cables securing it same mechanism as the full size. Next we're going to want to prepare to remove the display. The display will have to be removed so that the palm rest and the rest of the top cover can be removed after which you can see the video card is located here. To do that you'll need to disconnect the display cable to the monitor and unroute it. Make sure you don't break any of the clips in the process. You'll also need to track down the other cable that's attached to the displays. 
unwrote that as well. And then finally, you'll have your Wi-Fi cables. These are going to be attached to the wireless card underneath your notebook. You will need to disconnect the connectors. It may be helpful to label them depending on your Wi-Fi card. And then you will unroute them and they will come up through here. You'll see that in the next clip. You can see here that we've removed the wireless cables from the wireless card and unroute them. They're ready to go back through the top of the case. While you're here, there are four screws that you'll need to undo. Two here, marked with a D, and two here, also marked with a D. So we're back on top of the system now. So we will gently route our wireless cables through the gap. So once they are separated, screw on the left hinge and one screw on the right hand hinge. When you're removing your display it's important to make sure that all your cables are detached and clear of the system. Grasp the display firmly with both hands and lift upwards. Place the display off to the side somewhere out of the way so that nothing accidentally gets dropped on it. Now that the display is removed, you have three screws to remove here on the top palm rest. They're located and marked by P's. There's one in the corner here, one in the corner here, and then one in the center here. After you're done that, you'll need to remove all the different connectors that are currently attached to the motherboard. They are attached to the top case and for things like your power button and your trackpad. So there are one two, three connections to remove before you can remove your top case. Then you'll need to flip the notebook over to remove the rest of the screws securing the top case. There are two hidden under the hard drive stack. We've already pre-removed them, so in this case we won't do it. They are two, the only two silver screws. Otherwise there are one, two, three, four other screws and they're all marked with P's for palm rest. So remove them and then flip the notebook back over. You're now ready to remove the top case. Very gently, either with a finger or a flat tip screwdriver, pry along the edges till you lift up a corner. And gently work your way around the edges until the entire palm rest assembly is removed. Okay, and once that's removed, there are no cables attaching it, so you can set that aside somewhere out of the way. So now you'll see there's a video card located here. There's also a bay for a second video card if you have an SLI configuration or Crossfire configuration. So we'll zoom in over here, and you'll see the heatsink assembly. It's all one piece. It is secured by four screws. So that will be the next thing that we remove. When you're removing these screws, it's important to note that the spreader for the card matches the screw. So if you purchase a card from Upgrade Your Laptop, our spreader is different than the stock one found in many Alienware systems. You'll need to make sure that you get a set of screws with it. You'll find that the default Alienware ones do not fit. Once all the screws are removed, gently grabbing the edges of the heat sink, apply gentle, consistent pressure until the thermal paste unsticks. You can then lift it clear and then you'll have your video card underneath. In this case, we already have a 7970 in the system. You'll note that there are several thermal pads laid out across the card and over the heat sink to cover VRAM capacitors and other components. So we'll clean this card up and then I'll show you reapplying the 
heat sink paste, and then you'll see a final cut of the system completed back together and the card working in the system. So now you're ready to attach your heat sink spreader. The purpose of this little frame is to provide screw posts for your heat sink to attach to and clamp down to the card. So pressing and aligning the screw posts into the holes. Once they are in, you'll then want to check the placement of the thermal pads on the heat sink and compare how they line up to the card. So for example, you'll see that the thermal pads for the VRAM here and here line up with the VRAM on the card here and here. So they close together. And you can see that they make good contact there. You'll also see that there's several other components on the card or there's gaps all the way around. We provide an image to you that shows you which components require thermal pads and then you're able to apply them based on the heat sink in your system since each system is a little bit different. So we'll go ahead here and apply the thermal pads and then we'll be right back. So you can see now that all the, th all the thermal pads except the VRAM have been applied. Last step now would be to make sure everything lines up and squishes together nicely. So again, that's bringing the heat sink onto the card, lining it up with the screw posts, and then going around the card. You can apply some gentle pressure here. Try to keep your fingers on the screw posts. And you can see that we've got good contact with those pads in the heat sink. And that's important so that the heat transfers from the card to the heat sink and then gets exhausted by the fan on your system. A cool card is a happy card. So we'll reinstall this into the M18X. I'll put it all back together for you and you'll get to see it work. Once you have the card reinstalled in your system, one of the last steps we're going to do before we completely reassemble it is we're going to apply our thermal paste. So you don't need much for the 7970, it's a very compact GPU die. So that'll be enough paste. The pressure from the heat sink will spread that around the GPU and after a couple hours under load the IC diamond settles and will start giving you the best temperature results uh, that are currently available on the market. Okay, we've got our system all back together. Power's in, battery's in. Let's see what happens. So first things first, we'll go visit the BIOS. You can see here that Discrete Graphics 1 is detecting an ATI graphics card. You can see the rest of our configuration. We've got a 2670. We're also using BIOS version A05. That's the latest for the M18 at the time of this video. Please make sure you've got the latest BIOS before doing any upgrades. You can save yourself a lot of headache this way. Exit out and we'll load up Windows 7. Windows is started up now, so we'll go to our device manager. Our device manager will show us what kind of video card specifically we have installed so that you guys can see. Go device manager, display adapters, and there you have it. You have an AMD Radeon HD 7970M. We've already installed the drivers and we've been posting some pretty cool 3D mark scores. We're going to have some benchmarks up for you guys shortly. Thanks for watching.